I tell y'all all the time that being liked will get you so much more further than having actual talent. And that's just a hard lesson that Amanda Seals is needing to learn, but she's refusing to learn. Let's talk about it. I know y'all want to get to the tea, and baby, we will. But for those of y'all that's been living under a rock, baby, my name is Scott Santana. I've only been on YouTube since I was 2016. Started off going viral, telling stories about my crazy life. A couple of years later, I started doing ratchet recipes, went viral on TikTok. Then I opened up a channel, Line and Souls, where I was, you know, using my spiritual and psychic gifts to help the girls and whip them back into alignment. In other words, baby, she's gifted. And see, now I'm here to share all of those gifts on one channel. Beside me, whether it's a deep dive, a commentary video, cooking me, Music, reading Harvest Souls. Baby, if I want to upload a video of me picking my nose and breathing for 60 minutes, I'm into it. My house, my rules. I mean, I just ask that y'all follow me over on Twitter so I can stop talking to myself. And before you go and try to seek help and seek therapy, baby, seek me. Go to my website and book yourself a personal reading if you need one. Now, feel free to sound off in the comments, but be respectful and act like you got that act right. Now, this channel is for critical thinkers. We may not always agree. You may not always even like me. But one thing's for sure, your life will be changed after experiencing me. So subscribe. Now, enough of me rambling, child. I think we made it past the part that was needed to get this video monetized, child. Now, you do be going. Let's get into it. I want people to have fun. Let's kick back. Let's get into a little tea. Let's not get too crazy, but let's enjoy the sip. But let's get to the chi-chi, the kiki, the... The internet bull. What is going on, y'all? It's Scott Santana, aka Chut 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 Chi Chi, and we are back for another. Let's talk about it, okay? Because we got some things to talk about, and this video might piss a couple of y'all off. And if it pisses you off, then maybe just unsubscribe because you're not welcome here. You're not my type of person, okay? I do not like Amanda Seals much like I don't like Nene. I know it might seem like a trend to me not liking black women. I just don't like certain humans. And Amanda and Nene are both one and the same. And so we definitely go and dive deep and talk about all of that inside of this video. After, of course, y'all like the video. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Found it. These bitches is washed. I am the soap and these rags ain't involved. And saying shit sits out in mama's garage. They hate to see that a bitch finally on top. Watching my social media, changing my Wikipedia. This trendy to the top and tedious. I will stop from video. Who got the who got the trench? Who got the who got the wrench? Who got the who got the weed? And they all going up for me. I'm trying to party, let's get naughty. Twerk your body, work this party. I'm trying to party, let's get naughty. Twerk your body, work this party. Who got the who got the trench? Who got the who got the wrench? Who got the who got the weed? And they all going up for me. I'm trying to party, let's get Twerk your body, work this party I'm tryna party, let's get naughty Twerk your body, work this party Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this Amanda Sills tea that seems to be everywhere, okay? So Amanda Sills responds to an article about her and says, the Black community and members of Black media have happily castigated me for saying I deserve to be in these spaces. Okay. Let's go ahead and start this over because y'all know the way that the volume works on Instagram. Let's see what she got to say. Do I need to pause this? Shout no, because we're not reading that. Let's get to it, Amanda. Let's get to it, Amanda. <sighs> you know, whether you like me or not, I've dedicated my entire life to the advancement and the love of Black people. And I have spent this week and my entire life, um, you know, being excoriated for maybe not always having the best uh, delivery or not being able to uh, maybe 
put my my emotions into the space in the best way possible. This week in particular, I watched as members of the Black community and Black media. Oh. Oh. Happily have castigated me publicly for simply saying that I feel I deserve to be in spaces that I've poured into. I've also watched Black media in this same time frame <laughs> platform individuals who have dedicated their lives to being anti-Black and perpetuating white supremacy. I deserve to be protected and appreciated. I hope that those of you who found it in your space to speak of me in such vitriol, though I've never brought it to you, I hope that you take time to do the self-exploration that you're suggesting that I do. And there are private apologies and, and thank yous and love and that is appreciated, but it does sting that it's never as loud as the public cacophony, but they are happy to receive <laughs> from me. <laughs> Which says to me, Amanda, go where you are loved. Happily have castigated me publicly for simply saying that I feel I deserve to be in spaces that I've poured into. I've also watched Black media in this same time frame. <laughs> platform individuals who have dedicated their lives to being anti-Black and perpetuating white supremacy. I deserve to be protected and appreciated. I hope that those of you who found it in your space to speak of me in such vitriol, though I've never brought it to you, I hope that you take time to do the self-exploration that you're suggesting that I do. <sighs> And there are private apologies and, and thank yous and love, and that is appreciated. But it does sting that it's never as loud as the public cacophony, but they are happy to receive <laughs> from me. <laughs> Which says to me, Amanda, go where you are loved. So you can catch me on my Patreon. The SEAL Squad is where I'll be. This work is very difficult even when you take Lexapro. Okay. So you can catch me on my Patreon. I just wanna say something. If it wasn't for y'all, I would really, if it wasn't for y'all, I would really think that I ain't doing shit. Because the industry I'm in does not recognize me. And to be clear, I'm speaking about the black spaces in the industry I'm in, because y'all know I don't give two dams about any of these other spaces, but I'm, I, the black spaces is what I'm referring to, which is largely in part why I realized like I need to shift out of this industry. You know, like I don't get invited to Essence Women in Hollywood. I've never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. I've been, I've been nominated for an Image Award. Never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. Never been honored at Black Girls Rock, like, <laughs> I've hosted these events, you know what I'm saying? Um, I literally hosted the BET Awards in 2020 in my house, and I was not invited to the BET Awards since. I just wanna say something. If it wasn't for y'all, Okay, I well, let's go ahead and get into it. Amanda, Amanda, Miss Amanda Sills, you are an unlikable bitch. And it's literally just as simple as that. It literally is just as simple as that. I see a lot of people talking about, oh, how could BET invite her to host the reunion? Not Chad. <laughs> Mine is stuck on baddies and housewives, Chad. How could they invite her to host the award show but then not have her come back to the show? Well, turn it on. Turn it on. Turn it on. Turn it on. If they had her host a show, but she has not been back since she's hosted that show. If you invite somebody over to your house, but then you purposely choose not to invite them back to your house after, is it because you're black? Is it because you're a black woman? Is it because they black or they a black woman? Is it because of that? Or could it be that you did not have a pleasurable experience with said person that you invited to said function? Hmm. Turn it on. 
Turn it on. Okay. See, maybe Amanda hosted that award show and she was so difficult to work with. And yes, I'm going there. Yes, I'm going there. I'm sorry. It's 2024. Stop hot and behind. Oh, black people and black women. and da, da, da. No, some of y'all bitches are difficult. Some of y'all bitches literally are bitches and y'all are difficult to fucking work with. And then you go and hide behind, protect black women. And oh, you can't say this to me because I got a vagina. I got a vagina. You can't say this to me because I'm dark skin. You can't say this to me because I'm black. No, we can't say that to you because y'all use black as a crutch. Like it, 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 it is supposed to help you get out of all accountability and bullshit. No, sometimes you are just a fucked up person. Sometimes you just do bad business. Sometimes you really are an angry black woman. And it's not necessarily about a stereotype, but what the fuck else do we call you when you are black, you are a woman, and right now you're angry and being problematic? What the fuck else do we say? I have problem with people like this. I really find issue with people like this because I tell y'all all the time there are people who know they are very full aware that there are so many campaigns and political you know things out there and narratives out there and stereotypes that's out there and whatnot and like people will literally be terrorists domestic terrorists okay domestic terrorists and then hide behind all of these social media campaigns because they know that dumbass is going to come and trauma bond with them and just completely overlook the part that they played. This is not Amanda's first time getting called out for her behavior. This is not her first time. She was on the rail. Then they had to get up off of that show because they realized, oops, no, this is not the, you know, this is not what we wanted. You know, back in 2020, when everybody and their mama, every reality show, every talk show was pandering to black people. Okay. Because we was out here dying left and right along with the people from COVID and every, every source media, tried to pander to Black Lives Matter. And so the real was no exception. They wanted to pander to Black people. So they went and hired Amanda. And she was the, the wrong fit, the wrong fit from day one. And they realized they made a mistake. And then even her leaving that show, it was problems. Then we hear about her being at the Insecure. What what was it? It was, it was like a club attendant she was trying to get into or a dinner or something like that. And they kicked Amanda out or they wouldn't let her in. And then everybody from the Insecure cast came out and basically was like, yeah, it's because Amanda is a bitch. She's unlikable and we, do, we don't fuck with her. Y'all don't remember that? Let's go ahead and bring up the tea. Let's go ahead and bring up the tea because one thing Sky going to do is find the receipts. So Amanda Sills responds to rumors of being difficult to work with. If you don't have your shit together, true indeed. Now, mind you, this was... This is a, this was published on June 29th, 2022, but I feel like it happened even before that. It happened sometime 2020 or 2021, right? Now, Amanda Sills is clearing up the preconceived notion that she is an impossible force with whom to work. Preconceived, meaning that the idea is already there and feel how you want to feel about stereotypes. I've always felt this way. Stereotypes is nothing but proven data over time. There's this weird ass thing that we like to do as black people, and I wish we would fucking stop. Granted, when stereotypes get to the point where it's literally changing somebody's livelihood over nothing, then yes, obviously it's a fucking problem. Like, no, I should not be getting followed every time I walk into the store. No, I should not be getting racially profiled when I'm driving down the street or just walking down the street and then a cop, you know, pull me over and then now I got to worry about if I'm going to make it home. All of that is not okay and will never be okay. So please don't put words in my mouth right now with what I'm saying and open up the ears and turn it on so you can hear what it is that I'm about to say. Okay. And make sure you understand. While I understand that, yes, stereotypes can be harmful, this, that, and the third, we're not going to sit and act like we don't stereotype motherfuckers every single day. We're not going to sit and act like. I'm in a new city. I don't really know where I'm at. I'm in somebody's hood. I see a bunch of a bunch of niggas hanging out on the corner. I'm crossing the street. Because I don't know what's going on, but I have to look at you and assess how you're dressed and how you're moving. And I need to move across the street. If I see a whole bunch of people running, I'm not going to stop and wait to figure out what's going on because y'all might be running from danger. So let me get the fuck up out of here as well. Like, come on now. We sit and we talk about these stereotypes when it's cute, when it's a cute, you know, key key on Twitter and on TikTok. But those are stereotypes as well. Sometimes you have to assess the situation or assess the person based off of X, Y, and Z. And sometimes stereotyping is beneficial. It becomes problematic when it's like you're using stereotypes to be divisive. That's when it's problematic. Now, as far as Amanda, 
people like Amanda, like I said, they use these political campaigns and these social media narratives or whatever to evoke domestic terrorism on folks because they know that people are going to trauma bond and automatically jump to, okay, well, fuck whatever it is that you did. It must be because you have a vagina or because of the color of your skin. And it's like, no, sometimes you're just difficult or you're just problematic or you're just a bitch or you're just a jerk. And that's what Amanda is. She's hard to digest. She's overbearing. And the fact that so many people are trying to make it now seem like we're all unintelligent or we can't, you know, grasp, you know, what it is that Amanda speaks and her content and we must be dumb because we don't like the bitch. No. I'm the deepest motherfucker on this goddamn planet, baby. Come on now. When Candace dropped that album, Deep Space, she was talking about me, bitch. Okay? Because that's how deep I am. Like the ocean, ho. I can understand clearly what Amanda be putting out with her content, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that I have to like her because I can understand her content. No, sometimes you can be overbearing. You can come across very abrasive, very aggressive. And yes, I'm using that word. Yes, I'm using that word too. Because again, like I said, people hate the stereotypes and the set and the third, but what, what the fuck else do we call it? What else do we call it? It's like, we can't get mad at shit that we do and then get mad when there's a word given to it. You know you know what I'm saying? Like, while I can be annoyed that I might be getting stopped when I go to the beauty supply store, I can also look as I'm exiting out the store and see the Hall of Fame of all the people that look like me that done went up in that store and tried to steal. So I can't be necessarily mad that these Chinese people is wanting to protect their business. And this is how they know how. I can be very, very highly upset in this, that, and the third. But what I'm going to do is instead of making a big deal with them, I can either not shop there or I can go back to my own people and be like, yo, let's do better. Let's do better. There's no reason. Like, not that it's going to completely clear up getting followed in the store, but like, come on now. Come on. If you already know that there's certain prejudices and all of that out there, why are you being dumb and add into it and going into the store and stuff? Like, come on now. You, you making it worse for me and people that look like me and look like us, like you're creating the stereotype, you're adding to the stereotype. You understand what I'm saying? And Amanda is one of those people, like one of those people. Every time you tune into her content, it's just knocking you over the head with bullshit, knocking you over the head with bullshit, knocking you over the head with bullshit. And it's not bullshit that she's necessarily saying. It's more so just her whole approach. She comes across as somebody who does not have fun somebody that's constantly mad, somebody that's constantly upset, somebody that constantly has a problem. And that shit is toxic. It's toxic. In 2024, y'all hoes need to learn balance. I swear to God y'all do. Because nowadays, everybody want to be so woke and, add, oh, my trauma, my trauma, my trauma. And the other day, I almost tweeted out some shit, but I did not know how to phrase it. Because I was seeing, you know, like tweets going viral on my timeline. That was basically glamorizing trauma. Like, I feel like there's a huge problem with that. And I noticed that Gen Z also has a huge problem with glamorizing trauma. And it's like, yes, deal with your issues, work on yourself, this, that, and the third. But like, glamorizing it and making it fantastical and all of that, like, it, it's too much. It's too much. Newsflash, nobody should constantly be in a cycle of healing. Just like nobody should constantly be in a cycle of bullshit. Life is about ebb and flows. You're up, you're down. And then sometimes it's okay to literally just exist. Literally just exist and be there. It's okay. Like you don't always have to be going through some shit. Just like you don't always have to be mad. I'm not waking up every single day mad at the man. Uh, da, 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 like <sighs> Amanda is the type of person that will literally blame the white men for every single thing. Oh, we got drug addicts and crackheads and rapists and all of that in the black community. Oh, it's because of the white men and what, you know, the, the whole coke epidemic that they did in the 80s. You know, y'all niggas love to bring that up. Love to bring up what done happened 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. And it pisses me off every time I hear that because I'm just like so much has changed since then. And you will never. 
I'm sorry, y'all will never normalize certain behaviors for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not everybody is out there selling drugs because of what the, you know, what the white men did in the 80s and how they brought crack in a coke epidemic. And no, some of these motherfuckers is doing this shit because they think it's cool. Some of these motherfuckers is doing it because they fucking lazy and don't want to get up off their ass and work like everybody else. Some of these motherfuckers is scared to struggle for a day or two until they're up. Like, come on now. The rest of us out here breaking our fucking back, going to jobs that we do not like. Okay, putting in hours, doing shit that we don't want to do, but doing it because we have to, and that's just the way of life. That's just a part of what goes on. But then you'll have people like Amanda that will go and make excuses and shift it all onto a white person. And no, 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 no. Because you're black, you're supposed to have this, that, and then I understand that we have we as a people have been through a lot. Come on now. But we're not going to use, and I'm going to just say, we're not going to use slavery as an excuse for everything. And I don't like people like that. I don't. I don't. Because if you sit and question them and question them and question them and question them so you get to the bottom of the answer, that's probably what it'll go to. I understand. I completely understand that we do not have it easy. But at the end of the day, these are the cards that were dealt. These are the cards that were dealt. You're not the first, you're not going to be the last. I have huge issue with people that feel like they can just cheat their way through life by being problematic or being divisive or by jumping ahead in front of other people. Like I, I have issues, like strong issues with people like that. Like it triggers the hell out of me, the hell out of me. It's like everybody goes through shit. It's like you sitting here complaining this, that, and the third, but what was Michelle Obama's excuse? What was, you know, um, hell, I'm not even going to say Oprah and use like big examples like that. But my point is, is that there's clear examples of success and what it looks like. Like there's more than enough examples of success and what it looks like than for us to still in 2024 be leaning on being black or being a black woman or a woman period in 2024. Like the, the, like we got to stop leading with drama. I promise you everything that happens to you in your life is not because of your gender or your race or your skin color. It is not, it is not, it is not like, and it also triggers me because I'm the main bitch who could get up here and say, Oh, the woe is me as much as I've gone through in my life. And as many things that I am, as many categories as I fall into. BBW. Trans, LGBT, then still a woman on top of that, then still black on top of that. Okay, amongst other shit that y'all don't know about. So it's like, I, like if if there's anybody that could pull a pull a race card or a sexuality card or a gender card or a fat phobia card, like I could, I I could, but I don't. Because you take the cards that you you've been dealt, and you go about life and you you deal with it. But then you have people that don't want to do that and they rather complain. They rather complain and then they rather campaign to get other people on board with them and so that, you know, they can trauma bond and they can use their anger to break down doors and barriers when they should just. And it's not to negate any work, like actual work that Amanda has done. But again, when the riffraff and the negativity, the negativity at this point, because that's how you're moving. You're moving like an ungrateful nigga. What Michelle Obama say? What Viola, Viola Davis say? He is a nigga. That's what it's given. That's 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 what it gives. And that's what it always gives with Amanda Sills. You want to be respected in such a way, but then you also move in a certain type of way that completely clashes with that. You get way more bees with honey. Way more. Just like you get so much further in life being liked. This is why Nene can't seem to find a show to land on to save her life. This is why Nene is sitting here scrounging for jobs and having to work for Zeus and online cursing Porsche the fuck out because she is unlikable and she's not nice. 
sometimes your reputation precedes you. Sometimes, you know, everything that comes with you is not worth the risk. Okay, it's it's not worth it. It's it's not worth it. Like, sure, there might be a reward because Amanda is talented at what she does, but like the risk is just not worth the reward because your brand and just your whole everything is chaotic and it's tiring for people. There's people right now that used to follow Amanda but can't even go look at her page anymore and had to unfollow and unsubscribe from her because they was tired of seeing her content and tired of being mad with her. Don't nobody want to hear and see that shit all fucking day. Like I keep saying, she's good at what she does when it comes to doing what she does, right? It's the whole approach. It's the entire approach. And it can't be everybody else. Because she had problems with the real. She had problems with the whole insecure cast. Now she's talking about BET and NAACP. And da -da. I wonder why you're not getting invited, Amanda. Maybe you coming in these buildings, rubbing shoulders with these people and pissing them off. Let's get into this article. Amanda Sills is clearing up the preconceived notion that she is an impossible force to work with, right? The outspoken and quit with an actress has been working in the entertainment industry since the age of eight when she starred on Nickelodeon's My Brother and Me. However, it wasn't until she starred alongside Issa Rae and other cast members on HBO's Insecure that she became a regular household name for millions of viewers. But somewhere down the line, a Columbia University graduate moved from being appreciated for her talents to instead being viewed as a polarizing individual. Those talents include the gift of gab, which we know she got, hosting, radio and award shows, as well as her small doses podcast. And that's a brilliant name because that's only how much we could take the bitch is in small doses. Like, see, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, we got to start being real. Again, everything is not because you're a fucking black woman. It's not. It's not. It's not. People like that anger me. I need y'all to please stay away from people who every time they open their mouth, especially when it's to other black people. And I tell y'all all the time, call me a coon, call me whatever the fuck you want to call. I don't care. I don't care. I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of hearing it. It's backwards. It's ass backwards. And it's doing nothing but keeping black people in a state of fucking trauma. I'm tired of it. As a black woman. As a black woman. And then nine times out of ten, everybody that's saying this and commenting this and using these types of words, like... You're talking to other black people that also understand the experience. If you're going to talk like that, take that shit over to Fox News. If you're going to talk like that, take that shit over to the Kelly Clarkson show. If you're going to talk like that, take that shit over to Hallmark, Lifetime, the E! Channel. Take that over to there where they need to hear and know more and understand the black experience better. Don't fucking come to the BET Awards, the Hip Hop Awards, the Source Awards, the NAACP Awards, the, what else, the Image Awards, the... Shit, what else? Don't come to all of these black platforms and then dump the same trauma that I'm already going through back onto me. Bitch, I don't need to hear how hard it is to black Well, I know. I know. So why are we having this conversation? Like, why are you on stage at an all-black event where there's nothing but black people there talking about how hard it is as a black woman? Bitch, we know. We know. It's doing nothing but leading with trauma and keeping people in a state of trauma, a state of being the perpetual victim. And that is what Amanda is, a perpetual victim. She represents literally that as a black woman demographic that is comfortable staying in a place of unaccountability and in a place of feeling like the entire world is supposed to be handed to them for whatever reason, fill in the blank. And that's just not reality. It's just not reality. And it's unfair that the rest of us have to get the fuck up and work and deal with whatever cards that were dealt while these bitches get to complain and still somehow make it through life. Like, it shouldn't work like that. Especially not in 2024 when, like I said, there's millions of examples of people making it. Like, why are we still talking about, oh, it's so hard for, for black women in Hollywood? I'm, and I'm sure that it is. I'm not denying that it's not. Okay, I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, we don't have a heart in certain areas. Like I'm I'm hear what I'm saying. 2024 is way different than 1992, where there might have been like one plus size model. 
you know, maybe one black known actress, maybe what da da da. Nowadays, when we got so many examples, that should no longer be the go to immediate statement. It should not. It should not. We shouldn't still be talking about representation in 2024, not to the extent of how we were talking about it in 1992. I didn't say it doesn't matter. I said we should not use that as a leading intro statement to get notice, to get attention, to, to, I don't even know, but I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to say. Because there's been too many examples. It, 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 there's too many examples that is possible. We're not talking about 1992 where there was nothing but white Barbies. White superstars. I mean, even that's a lot. But you, you know what I'm saying. Like, now when you can go into Walmart and you can see Asian Barbie, you can see Puerto Rican Barbie, Sazon Barbie, okay? Blackano Barbie. Like, Deeper conversations for different days, child. You know the whole difficult thing. You know the whole work, uh, whole difficult to work with thing. It came out of me just voicing that. It came out of me voicing the negatives that took place in certain workspaces I've been in. Mind you, this is two years ago, and two years later, she's still. The other half of the equation, according to Sills, is people wanting to turn me into this person who just can't get along with. Wait, wait, hold on. The other half of the equation, according to Sills, is people wanting to turn me into this person who just can't get along with anyone. And it's always fascinating to me because I've been in this game longer than anyone I've even ever worked with. Yeah, and you've been annoying them since you've been in the game. Like, I don't understand. You saying, oh, people want to turn me into this person who just can't get along with anyone. But yet, every time we turn around, why does every bad, every every business deal you have turn bad? It can't be everybody else. It can't. It can't. And until she goes to therapy, learns to take some accountability, which is a problem that a lot of... <laughs> a lot of people have. Until she learns to start being accountable, she going to forever go through this shit. It can't be everybody else. And mind you, there are some situations where it literally is everybody else. Like, in a situation where you like the black sheep, oh, yeah, it's because everybody else is fucked up and you're the golden child and that's why niggas is mad. Totally understandable, okay? Or there might be a situation where you realize, okay, everybody don't like this one person, at, at, you know, in the family or whatever, but you realize, oh, this is a person with the most peace because they just saw through all the bullshit and all the programming that everybody else under. It's situations where, yes, it is everybody else. But in this situation, no, it's Amanda. And the crazy thing is she's not the only Amanda that's in the blogs for this type of behavior. It's another Amanda in the blogs. And I'm thinking about doing a video on that with the whole seated thing is Joe Button podcast shit. A mess. But um, one of those workspaces was a now canceled talk show, The Real. For six months, Amanda brought her no hose barred social com uh, commentary to the table alongside, you know, Lonnie, Adrian, Jeannie. Sills has previously said she felt muzzled and unable to show up as a full black woman. What the fuck is showing up as a full black woman? What the fuck is showing up as a full black woman? Please tell me. Please tell me. Does being a full black woman mean like I get to get up on national TV and just sit around and complain with an attitude and mad at the world? Is that what it means to be black? Again, I can't stand people like this. You wear your trauma on your shoulder, on your arm, and you wear that shit as a badge of honor. I cannot stand it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Listen, y'all know I think very differently. I don't even agree with the fact that y'all be out in the streets protesting saying no justice, no peace. Bitch, it should be more justice, more peace. Be careful of the, the rhetoric that you put out there into the world. The universe is always listening, okay? Words are very powerful. Energy is very powerful, okay? Those vibrations, the universe will match, okay, if that's what you want. So when you sit and say black women are the most disrespected, guess what's going to keep happening? Right. Amanda will also go to reiterate her frustrations when the show aired its farewell episode and neglected to include her. Why would they? I mean, at the time, I think I did feel like, okay, well, they should have included her, but at the same time, you're problematic and we don't like you, bitch. And you was only here for six months. 
not even a full season. So you hated being here so bad. Then, bitch, let's go on. Go on. Go on. Like, come on. Let's not sit and act like you don't get into it with somebody and then storm off. And then they, like, you, you're not about to sit there and be like, well, thank you for your, se- no, you storming off. We mad at each other. I don't give a fuck. You hated it so much. Why would you want to be included? I think you would want to erase this part of your life. Because you couldn't show up as a full black woman, whatever the fuck that is. And you know, Amanda is probably one of those types of natural born working vaginas. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Amanda is probably one of those natural born working vaginas that would look at me and be like, you're a man. Mm. we're not even going to get into that conversation child because if you don't understand why I said natural born working vaginas it's for a reason who was this one second hello Mm -hmm. child we're not even going to get into those conversations but let me just clear it up real quick because I don't want nobody getting down into my comment oh you hate black mama and no I'm specifically referring to a certain group of people, okay? There's a certain group of people that are extremely, extremely transphobic that place their vagina above everything and feel like if you don't have a vagina, then you're not a real woman. And to that, I say, if you go through breast cancer, does that make you any less of a woman? What if you were born with a condition or... That's a deeper subject for a different video. Don't piss me off. We're not even going to get into that conversation right now. But um, Amanda said her intention is always coming for, from a good place when she speaks out. Is it? She need to find a better place then, baby, because that's, mm, that's your good. That's your good. She need to find a better. When she speaks out, I will absolutely admit, yeah, I'm difficult to work with if you don't have your shit together. True indeed. I'm also difficult to work with if you are trying to slight me. I'm not going to make that easy for you. If you're not going to show up on a way that we've agreed, we're both going to show up, then that's going to be difficult for you. She further explained why owning her contributions to being labeled difficult. So are you difficult or are you not difficult? Because now you're trying to be cute and creative when really, again, you're just a bitch. A person that is getting tired of of being their own obstacle, but nevertheless going to stick to their guns. Sometimes we got to stop and redirect our energy and life. Let's talk about it. I trust Amanda means well, but she does seem to have a chip on her shoulder that she carries on her energetic field. People can sense it and see it. And this was two years ago. Right. Intention and impact are two different things. While her intentions may be from a good place, her impact really hits a good place. It's because of her. She's not in a good place in her life. Despite the challenges she in, um, encountered in her career and seemingly never ending criticism, Amanda continues to be booked. I continue to work because there are enough people who understand that I do mean well. Okay, but eventually people are going to get tired of having to defend you or give you a disclaimer. Like, pe- people get tired of that shit. People get tired of that shit. Think about it like with friendships. You get tired of being like, I'm sorry, y'all. This is my friend. She she means well. She real mouthy. Okay. She might say something that might hurt your feelings, but she mean what? Like you get tired of that. And every, like people don't always want to be around that energy 24 seven. They don't. They don't. So you need to fix whatever's going on in here and up here so that out here can look better for you. But until then, I'm sorry. Mm-mm. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. Well, go ahead and like this video. I am the one, two, three. I am the bitch that these little niggas ain't. How you gonna escape when I am the key? That's why everywhere I go, they say following me like damn. Get back on track, I'll be who I am. Every day is number than this life span. Look in the mirror, tell myself, look in. Self love and happiness is all about a guy's plan. Child, let me know what y'all thought about all of this down in the comment box below. As if I give, 
Okay. And definitely make sure you stream my music as if you give fuck. Okay. Party is dropping this week. Um, Happy is out and uh, Swing My Way is out. So go stream both of those songs as, as well as show me the my sh- sh- Stream all my stuff. Okay. Stream all my stuff. And I love each and every one of y'all allegedly. And I'll see y'all hoes in the next one. Now get the fuck out. Universal bad bitch, everybody language, everybody know she the mud, mud, bad, bad. Universal bad bitch, everybody language, everybody know she the mud, mud, bad, bad. Universal bad bitch, everybody language, everybody know she the mud, mud, bad, bad. Universal bad bitch, everybody language, everybody know she the mud, mud, bad, bad. Fuck it up, love it how they cutting up. Now these niggas throwing up, but wasn't when I'm coming up. Fuck it up, love it how they cutting up. Now these niggas throwing up.